this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order and ask you to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We open each meeting uh, with the hearing of visitors. This is an opportunity for uh, residents to come before the school committee, the mayor and the superintendent of schools, uh, to make public comment uh, up to three minutes. We'll let you know in advance that all comments or questions are taken under advisement by the school committee. There's no response by the school committee at this time and there's a three minute time limit. Uh, our first visitor to speak this evening is uh, Christine Vallon, if I pronounce that correctly. Come on up, Christine. Yep, just sit right there and speak into the microphone and the floor is yours. Thank you, sir. Good evening. My name is Christine Vallon. I am currently a health teacher at Plouffe Academy. I'm not here on behalf of my position being cut due to the budget restraints. I'm here on behalf of my middle school students and all the other middle school students that attend Brockton Public Schools. I do understand that budget cuts had to happen in order to keep the schools running efficiently. However, cutting the health education program for all middle schools beginning next year is an erroneous mistake and an injustice to our adolescents. Being in the school system for over 20 years, there are two things you hear quite often. Number one, always keep your children safe. And number two, whatever is in the best interest of those children. I believe that cutting the health education program does neither of these things. When my students first learned that health class would no longer be offered to them, they were very upset. Unbeknownst to me, a few of my students went down to Central to speak to with Superintendent Kathy Smith. That speaks volumes. With no disrespect to the school committee, superintendent or the mayor, but none of you have ever visited a health classroom to see what really goes on. Students are learning about drug use and abuse, human growth and development, aka sexual education. They're learning positive strategies on how to deal with a bully, what does a healthy relationship look like and sound like, and nutrition education. Students are discussing, they're debating, they're researching, and reporting on various health topics. They're practicing refusal skills through role plays, and they're constantly sharing their experiences and their opinions regarding the subject at hand. These are important issues that need to be addressed with our adolescents, and I'm wondering, as so are many of my students, who is going to have this conversation with them about these topics. Are you aware that New England has the highest incidence of heroin use and abuse in this country? Obesity is the number one preventable death in the United States, and over the last three years, I have seen an increase in self-harm. There are no, these are not topics that are appropriate for discussion in elementary school, and quite honestly, it's too late to begin these topics with them in high school. I have middle school students who are sexually active. I have middle school students who are smoking marijuana, taking someone else's prescription medication. I have students that are cutting themselves, and I've lost five former students to Oxycontin and heroin use. Furthermore, students enter a health teacher's doorway quite often seeking help, advice, or just a shoulder to cry on. For some students, this is a safe haven. The other issue I wanted to point out is how much the health program is a major thread in the fabric of each school community. For example, over at the Ashfield School, their grab-and-go breakfast numbers are higher than any other middle school. That's because Linda Haynes, who is the health teacher at that school, had her sad students make it their mission to try to increase the amount of students eating breakfast. And they did this wonderfully. In addition to running the SAD program, she also runs a girls leadership club, heads up the Healthy School Project, and makes her presence known out at the schoolyard every morning, encouraging her students to go and grab some breakfast. Collectively, health teachers throughout the city have incorporated in their schools Anti-Bullying Week, Random Acts of Kindness Week, Dress to Impress Day, some are coaches, some run the intramural program in their schools, some are mentors, and some work with the special needs students outside of their classroom. Health teachers make an important connection with our students because of the subjects being taught. Kids search us out looking for help. A health teacher's job goes far beyond the classroom. I tell my students all the time I truly care about them, and I do. They are the reason why I come to school every day. 
I'm very concerned that without a health education, some students may be more apt to experiment with drugs, not use the proper protection to protect themselves against sexually transmitted diseases, or lack the knowledge and skills necessary to refuse bad, unsafe behaviors. I don't want our students falling through the cracks, harming themselves and others around them because health education is no longer being offered in their school. Our adolescents need the education that middle school health teachers provide. Thank you for your time. I hope that I have said, uh, um, excuse me, I hope what I have said this evening has given you some vision as to what actually goes on in our schools and how pertinent every health educator is. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Linda Haynes. Good evening. Um, my name is Linda Haynes and I live at 70 Bernice Avenue in Brockton. I've lived in Brockton for the last 32 years and my two children are both graduates of Brockton Public Schools and now graduates of Bro uh, Bridgewater State University. Before being part of the public pu Brockton Public School faculty, I'd served on various parents groups, um, school councils, and taught in community schools. In other words, I'm devoted to Brockton Public Schools. Presently, I serve the students of the Ashfield Middle School, but was notified on May 15th that I would have a change of assignment. I want to thank Mrs. Vallon for her praise of me, and I, trust me, Mrs. Vallon's taught me a great deal um, since I've become a health teacher at the Ashfield. As both a health educator and a citizen of our city, I've chosen to speak tonight because of my concern that the middle school health program has cut, been cut from our school system. I do not believe that this decision will best serve our children or their families um, from our school system. Our middle school health program is challenging and interesting to our students. This age group is curious and eager for information about their choices and the decisions that they need to make. Mrs. Vallon and I were on a committee um, last spring with our other colleagues with the Brockton Mayor's Opiate Overdose Prevention Coalition, excuse me, to update our curriculum and to address the current drug and substance abuse issues. We adapted the National Institute of Drug Abuse curriculum entitled Brain Power in order to teach the students exactly how drugs affect the brain. My students have made models of brains. They have diagrammed how emotions work in our brain and, and have results in their actions. They've acted out how neurons work and can explain that to you and they can explain how neurotransmitters change after using drugs and causes serotonin and dopamine to deplete and cause cravings for more drugs. They can describe how marijuana hurts your memory and motivation by hanging around in your hippocampus, even if it's medical marijuana and they're confused by these mixed messages that they get. We practice refusal techniques and role play them. Research shows that students are less likely to use drugs when they understand the physical consequences using the latest brain science. This makes sense to many of our students that have witnessed firsthand the consequences of drug and alcohol abuse. We empower our students through knowledge of what substance abuse does to their brain and their bodies. Research tells us that using drugs in middle school years leads to addiction and dependence by the age of 19 to 21. In the past three years, the Asheville Middle School has not had a suspension due to drugs or tobacco offenses. I've worked with colleagues here in Brockton and across the state with DESE to update our human development curriculum. Our students are curious and interested in learning about the changes in their bodies during this time period. We are trained and comfortable to ans answering questions in a sensible, sensitive and knowledgeable way to this very diverse population. We have furthered the reach of health at Ashfield by having a girls leadership club that my colleague mentioned with the sole purpose of developing positive relationships and learning anti-bullying strategies. 
My girls have attended conferences and received an award from Governor Patrick for the anti-bullying work, as well as one of our students receiving the Make Your Mark Award from the Massachusetts Reduction Center at Bridgewater State University for her girls' leadership project. Students Against Destructive Decisions is a school club that further promotes health. Um, and they always set up health fairs at parent-teacher conferences to, to reach out to the community. Health teachers are trained in literacy techniques that include writing, reading, critical thinking, speaking, as well as a great deal of hands-on science activities. Conversation and social skills are always being taught. If anything, we need more time with our students. I understand the constraints of a huge budget in strained times, but I don't think we can afford the consequences of depriving the city of Brockton's middle school students of their health education. Thank you for your time. I, I'm going to allow the superintendent to make a comment soon as you're all here. Um, obviously, this has been a very difficult time in the Brockton Public Schools. It's actually been the past two years. I think many of you know we had very difficult decisions to make, and I can't agree with you more that what you provide for our students is valuable, is honored, and both the mayor and I and your school committee sitting here along with your elected officials have committed to looking for additional resources, looking at an equity in education lawsuit, looking at bringing business into the city, looking at Chapter 70 reform. So we are committed to continue to do that. But make no mistake that every single job that was cut with a reduction in force right now is not a job we can afford to lose. So we will continue to, to work to do the best we can for our students and our families and be committed to that, but understand that the work you do is valued every day in the Brockton Public Schools. I'd just like to acknowledge uh, <coughs> both health teachers' comments and, and say particularly uh, Linda's comments around the importance of uh, drug and substance abuse education in the middle schools is critical. Uh, many of you probably know that for the last four or five months I've been working on the governor's working group on the opiate addiction crisis. Our final report comes out next Monday. Um, and we extended beyond, I think, the original scope the governor gave us to address um, the critical nature of uh, education, childhood education being critical as, as being the real solution to reducing overdose deaths, uh, prevention through education. And, uh, uh, and I, th I couldn't agree more with what you said. I think you're on the right curriculum. I think teaching young people at an early enough age as to what the damage is that they do to their brain when they do drugs is, is the best um, curriculum along with, I think, curriculum that uh, strengthens decision-making skills and uh, allows uh, young people growing up to have more self-esteem and to learn techniques to resist peer pressure. And I think that when you combine developing those skills in young people, with a very uh, frank and, and detailed explanation of what happens to your brain when you do drugs. That is the curriculum we need to be teaching, and we absolutely need to be teaching in the middle schools. If it's up to me, we start teaching in the fifth grade. Um, so I will certainly pledge to work with the school committee to see what we can do to try to keep this curriculum in the middle schools. Okay. And just to let everybody know again, May 15th, we were obligated to send out the reduction in force notices. We continue each day to identify and to bring back as many positions as we possibly can for this year. That's work that is presently going on, and obviously we're looking to do that before the end of school. Okay. That uh, concludes our hearing of visitors. Uh, the next item on the agenda is our consent agenda. The consent agenda is the Mechanism, mechanism in which the school committee can uh, consider and approve a block of, of fairly routine business at once in order to expedite uh, the meeting. However, any individual school committee member may request that any item be removed from the consent agenda for individual uh, discussion and consideration. 
So at this time, I'll ask the members of the committee if anyone has a request to uh, remove an item from tonight's consent agenda. Hearing and seeing none, I'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda. Motion's been made and properly seconded for the approval of tonight's consent agenda. All in favor? Uh, unanimous. Thank you. So at this point in the meeting, uh, I will turn things over to Superintendent of School Smith uh, for her report on teaching and learning. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I apologize to all of you. I'm sure many of you might be pleased to know I'm struggling to talk tonight. But um, <clears throat> I'm just... I was disappointed. <laughs> I am fighting a cold, so I will get through it the best I can, but my deputies are on standby over there in case I can't get through this. Uh, first of all, we have our report from our student re representative, Jessica Freeborn. Jessica? Um, I would like to um, first start off, start off by once again congratulating our 922 Brockton High graduates and the other 27 graduates from the alternative schools who graduated on June 6th. We wish you all the best of luck in whatever you choose to do. So congratulations, we're very proud of you. Um, secondly, I'd like to give a big congratulations to our drama club for winning the best musical in the state for their production of Anything Goes, in addition to the best leading actress, Jean Shea, best supporting actress, Vanessa Vega, best acting ensemble, best dance ensemble, and best costume design. We're very proud of you here at Brockton High, so a well, job, well job done. Um, all right, so moving on, thank you to all of our sophomores who work so diligently. Science MCAS is over, so you're done for the year with MCAS, so congratulations, you survived it. Um, let's see. Next on my list is what's called Empower Yourself, which is run by one of our community members, Mr. Turner, at Brockton High, North, and Ashfield. We'll be having a series of luncheons with executives from several different corporations. Um, yesterday, we hosted Michael Bartuka, who is a partner at the McLandry Accounting Firm, and Dr. Fred McKinney, director of Tuck Business School at Dartmouth College. And today, we had James Bush, president of Bush and Company Insurance, Insurance, also the nephew of the former president, George W. Bush. I thought that was very cool. So congratulations to everyone who got to hear them speak and Empower Yourself will be providing us with an aviation program for the summer partnering with Bridgewater State College, MIT and Wentworth. So thank you very much for all your hard work. Sounds like a very interesting program. Um, moving on, June 23rd, Eastern Bank on Belmont Street will be hosting our banking students. So congratulations and thank you so much to Eastern Bank for letting our students be a part of this program. Um, and next week, can't believe the year is flying by, begins our finals here at Brockton High. So make sure that you study really hard and that you try your best. So good luck to everyone taking finals next week. Um, and students' last day of school is Wednesday, June 24th. Wow, that's scary. But all right. And my last thing is, since this is our last school community meeting of the school year, I would like to thank Superintendent Smith, Mayor Carpenter, and everyone here on the school committee for once again allowing me to sit on the school committee for this year. It was a great experience, and I just thank you so much. I've learned so much being able to sit here and enjoy the meetings and hear what everyone has to say. So thank you. Jessica, first of all, it sounds like you're a budding Republican. I'm not sure if I need to be concerned about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should have sat an instrument in That's true. Yeah, that's right. We have Republicans on the But we also um, want to thank you for not only your presence here, your attendance. You were very, very committed for two years. It is exactly what we wanted for a student representative. I think you've set the tone for years going forward. Um, we will miss you. We would like you to come up. We have some special gifts for you. Principal Logan, will you join us, please? Okay. Mayor, I'm going to give you this okay. to help me out Do here. This one, all right. And this is something special from uh, your high school classmates and your administration for all of the hard work. Mm -hmm. And there's something in there from the school committee also. Okay. So we're very proud of you as you become a senior at Brockton High School. We know you are going to do wonderful things. Thank so. you very much. 
Thank you. Yeah, we also have a certificate for you, Jessica. This is a certificate of recognition presented by the school committee uh, to you in recognition of your dedicated service as a student advisory council representative here sitting with us on the Brockton School Committee. And this is uh, co-signed on behalf of the school committee by both Superintendent Smith and myself. So this is for you all. So. Yeah. I also uh, I would also like to recognize uh, Jessica's mom Diane Freeborn uh, who has made sure she has been able to get here every night I know she stays here and has also been committed so thank you Diane put the package okay. there we go okay make a better picture Take the certificate. Now, that stuff. Okay. put that in front there, there we, we go. go there we go <laughs> You think we'd never done this before? I know. <coughs> Got it? Good. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Jessica. Jessica. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, Jess here is from the school committee. Oh, Superintendent's yeah. office. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, point out that Jessica recently received uh, an award for young women for their achievements with regard to STEM for Mass Maritime Academy and um, I believe that they basically have said that if she chooses to come to Mass Maritime there will definitely be a spot for her so she um, not only does she serve us certainly well but she serves herself and makes proud the Brockton Public Schools and of course her mom um, for her abilities, her, her multiple um, abilities. Well, you know, she's a great musician. She's, um, you know, great at science, and I'm sure she's great at all of her other classes. And um, she also wants to go into teaching, which should make you very happy, yeah. Superintendent Smith. So um, this is just one of uh, our many well-rounded students that uh, I, I say basically make Brockton proud and show people what we have here in Brockton, which is young people um, on the path to success. We have, we have the best kids, the best. Congratulations, and um, we are so proud of you. Again, some positive notes. I want to uh, let everybody know that we have appointed uh, a permanent department head of uh, International Baccalaureate at the Plouffe Academy. Uh, Bonnie Brady had been filling in when David Brewster left us, I think, a little over a year and a half ago. Um, and Bonnie has been, again, assigned full-time as our department head of IB. Bonnie's been with us, I believe, since 2006, so we're very, very pleased with that appointment. I'm not sure if Bonnie is here this evening. <coughs> we also appointed uh, Dan Corb, the department head of math. He had also been uh, serving on an interim basis when uh, Bob Perkins became our associate principal. So we're pleased that Dan is on board. I believe he's been a teacher at the high school since 2003. Uh, so we're very pleased with those appointments. Next, um, I would like to introduce you to our new principal at the Huntington School. Many of you know that June Saber is going to be the permanent executive director uh, of uh, grades uh, K to 5. And Diane Lynch, for this coming year, is going to be our interim principal at the Huntington School. And I'd like to uh, tell you a little bit of, about Diane, my dealing with Diane. It's great to have been in this district for so long because you have an opportunity to serve and work with so many talented educators, teachers, and administrators. And we truly do have a grow-your-own model. And when you talk about our administrative internship program, tonight there are a number of them out there that are finishing up their internships, and these are our future administrators in the Brockton Public School. So Diane uh, is a graduate of the Brockton Public School. She began her career in the district in 1995, taught at the Arnone and the Hancock School. She's been an IRS, Instructional Resource Specialist, at West <coughs> Middle. Uh, she has been the assistant principal at West for a number of years, and I'd like to invite Executive Director June Saba up here to talk a little bit uh, about Diane and what her role will be at the Huntington School. Diane is the proud parent of a couple of Brockton High graduates, uh, speaks uh, fluent uh, Cape Verdean Creole, and, and again, I, I couldn't be more pleased than to announce her as our new principal at the Huntington School. Thank you, Superintendent. I'm actually going to ask Diane to come and join me at the microphone. It's always, um, you know, strength in numbers, Diane. 
So I do have the great honor, actually, and pleasure to introduce Diane Lynch. So interestingly enough, though, or ironically enough, Diane and I actually started teaching together. And so when I what think back, that, um, I don't, and I was <laughs> going to ask her not to really um, identify what year that was, but I think it was close to 20 years ago, yes. where um, we were in 321A and 321B at the old Arnone School. So Diane and I not only taught next door to each other, but we didn't have a wall between us. So I had a lot of fun talking to my staff today about Diane and really being able to tell them how lucky they were to have her at the Huntington. Because I know for certain what a wonderful, dedicated, passionate educator she is. Because I was there beside her, oftentimes we would be finishing each other's sentences, and I truly mean that. There would be times when I heard her talking to her students, and I would say, boys and girls, stop talking and listen to Mrs. Lynch, because this lecture is also for you. And I know she did the same for me. So I'm really excited that she's going to be able to lend her expertise to the Huntington School. And again, Diane, I spoke with every faculty member today and they are truly looking forward to meeting with you tomorrow and Cliff West's loss is the Huntington's gain so I thank you. Thank you June. That's really sweet and it was a pleasure absolutely a pleasure working beside June for so many years and the RNO was a great opening experience for me as I embarked in a, a wonderful career here at in Brockton. Um, I'm very excited about this opportunity and I'd like to thank Superintendent Smith, Mayor Carpenter and the school uh, committee members, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's very exciting. I'm a very proud resident of Brockton. As mentioned before, I'm a proud graduate of the Brockton Public Schools, as my beautiful two daughters. Um, I have, a, have had a wonderful experience working with Dr. Cliff Murray, Julie Kennard, and the staff at West Middle School. Um, I ha have an elementary background, as, you, as Superintendent Smith mentioned. I worked at the Arnone and at the H Hancock School and then embarked in at West, and it was, has been truly a wonderful experience. I've been watching this innovative work that's been taking place at the Huntington School, and I've met with June a couple of times, and it's been exciting to hear all the fabulous in, um, uh, programs that have been implemented. I'm um, honored to be part of what's going to be an ongoing momentum as I continue to embark in that fabulous journey that she's put forth. And that staff is working so hard. I know that. I look forward to working with the Huntington staff and family members and um, in the upcoming year. And I thank you, everyone, for this great opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Minicello. Um, I've had a unique opportunity for the last eight years uh, to work with Mrs. Lynch, um, being the, that West is in Ward 1. Um, I couldn't agree more that she is a professional, uh, compassionate, uh, caring, competent, um, cheerful person. Um, a, what I would say a big personality, you know, a personality that's very warming to people certainly warming to kids um, and I think with her, her language skill set I think it's a nice fit um, we're gonna miss her at West um, but I will bother you and and prod you and come to the Huntington even if you don't want me to show up I'll show up um, and I'll continue to hopefully get invited to the parade um, but um, I, I appreciate what you've done at West and I think that um, you will be a nice addition to the Huntington. Okay, uh, to continue on, um, I know uh, just about a year ago now, we made the decision as a district to go forward with Park for this past school year. The reason for our decision was, again, it was an opportunity with the possibility of Park being adopted as the new high stakes testing in our state. We wanted our students to have an opportunity, our teachers to have an opportunity and our staff to see Park in action. Uh, we also uh, had talked about you know, pushing technology into our district. So when we made that decision a year ago, one of the things that uh, the commissioner assured everybody that there would be an opportunity, a forum after this process this year to talk about the pros, the cons, to talk about our experience with Park. On June 10th, the commissioner uh, was at Bridgewater State University along with the Secretary of Education, Jim Pizer, 
they were members of the uh, Board of Education because they will make a decision, we're told, possibly late fall on what will be the high stakes testing going forward. That's our anticipation. I was pleased that Dr. Cancel was in attendance, Deputy Superintendent Barry, uh, Eileen McQuaid, one of our park fellows, I believe Dr. Julian Andrade was there, and we did present as a district, as did Dr. Heather Ronan, I think at Bunker Hill, when there were forums going on throughout the state. So we were able to share some of the pros and cons. We will have a follow-up with the school committee, I'm anticipating, at the August 18th meeting. When our principals come back, we'll be able to have finished the school year, talk about our experience. Although I won't have information at that point what the decision is, we will be prepared for the fall and talk about uh, when we anticipate results coming in and uh, how we will present it to our parents and discuss going forward as a district. Um, also, <clears throat> on a positive note, I want to share with the school committee, we received our PLUF uh, Academy students went to uh, Washington, D.C. this past weekend. Uh, I heard it was a wonderful trip. You actually have a postcard here addressed to you, thanking you for letting uh, the school go to Washington, D.C. It was an amazing and educational trip, and she learned so much and just brought it from her younger sister, Taylor Freeborn, who attended as part of, I think, about 100 kids that we had go this past weekend. So I'm sure we'll hear more from them, and I know their principal, Nezrella, will be able to share pictures and, and all the wonderful things, which is exactly what we want to happen. I also had an opportunity, and Mayor Carpenter, I know you're going to get over to the Brookfield School because you yes. were truly missed. I know you had a number of things on your calendar. But when I walked in yesterday to the Brookfield School, I had an idea about a program that Principal uh, Val Brower had shared with me. It was called Choose to be Nice. And not, you know, many of us were able to go. There were a lot of elected officials there. Uh, and we actually took a pledge. And there was nothing better than this pledge. And I have to, you, you know how it was yesterday, pouring rain. And you had a cafeteria at the Brookfield School filled with faces from the littlest kindergarten student up through the fifth graders. And what they had us all do was come up. And what they did was, and this is something that they've done the past couple of months, I believe, at the school, is they have chosen to be nice. And every classroom might have done something a little different. My favorite story was a group of, I believe, first graders putting together plants and little notes. Because if you know what the Brookfield School is like, it's plunked right in the middle of a neighborhood. So imagine what it's like all these years later when I don't think we had as many people that had cars. We certainly had neighborhood schools. But every day, twice a day, you know what it's like if you live around that Brookfield school and, of course, many of our schools. So the children went out, dropped off little plants, little notes, thanking the people there for being such good neighbors and actually started to develop relationships with the people in the neighborhoods. A very wonderful experience. So we promise to spread kindness wherever and whenever possible. We promise to be the very best, uh, to do the very best of our ability to be nice to those with whom they come in contact with on a daily basis. We all took this pledge. I think we should take this pledge here. Um, but I have to tell you. You haven't been to City Hall, have you? <laughs> I have to tell you, though, when you are introduced, whether it be the mayor or the superintendent, the kids give you, you know, a, a, a polite clap. I'm, I'm sure they're not sure really who you are. It's always interesting to go and talk to the little kids about what you do. But you had to see a fire truck outside with three firefighters dressed in their gear. And when they were announced, the place erupted. When our police officer, and it was Officer Janet Frizzell, was introduced and came down. And when the kids finally realized she was in the uniform of a policeman or policewoman, the crowd went wild. And one of my comments to them, and I truly believe this, is I really do want to live in a community where the police and the firefighters get the biggest applause. So it was, with everything we do, teachers, it's wonderful. But it really felt good to, uh, to see our kids appreciate people that do things for them on a daily basis. So I want to thank Val Brower, her whole staff. Didn't matter that it rained at all. The kids were dancing. They were treated to ice cream. It was just one of a million of these end of the year celebrations that always makes me feel good about why I do this job or why we're all part of the Brockton Public Schools. I also want to uh, let you know we received an award from the United Way. I went to a luncheon this past Wednesday and there was a common good award given out in an education along with, I believe, uh, the Plymouth Public School District. I know Massasoit Community College was there 
Bridgewater State University and Stonehill College, so was the Brockton Public Schools. And I thank everybody that participates in the United Way every year, and it benefits many of our students and families. I also want to bring to your attention that Diane Goslin, our principal of the Downey School that passed away this past fall, very suddenly. There will be a, a dedication of an area, I believe, in the courtyard on the 24th of June at 10 a.m. I hope many of you can join us uh, for that celebration. We're very pleased that at the end of the year we're, we're able to, to honor uh, Diane's memory at a place that I know she loved. And on another happy note, we were actually notified this week that we received two large grant awards. The first one was a grant in the amount of $387,000 to our Raymond School, which is different than the Huntington School pot of money for extended learning time, but it will support extended learning time for our new K-5 to uh, reconfiguration at the Raymond. I'm very pleased the teachers are on board with that and we're starting to work out the particulars. Um, and also we received an out of school time grant and as you hear me talk about after school programs that are so critical and this is money that again we continue to, to write grants for in the amount of at the Baker School $140,000 for our students there for after school. So this is a start. I want to thank, I see Laurie Silver up there with our Grants and Development Office. I know Heather Arrighi worked very hard on these grants. So these are the kind of good news stories that we want to be able to share in the district. Uh, the next item on, on the agenda is um, the ratification of the MOU between, between the Brockton Public Schools and the Brockton Education Association. I want to thank certainly all of our school committee members that served. I think all of you have heard me talk about not only the hours that went into uh, the training uh, back in March of 2014, I believe that was 10 hours, never mind the 34 meetings that took place uh, well over a year when we began, I think a year ago, May. Uh, the BEA uh, membership actually ratified this agreement on June 4th. I want to invite uh, the president of the BEA, Kim Gibson, to come down here because this truly was a collaborative effort and a very first time that we as a district uh, employed the uh, interest-based bargaining for our district. There were many years where the contract again was extended because a number of things we weren't able to look at language. There were things that, that we were able to look at in this contract. I fear, feel it is a fair and equitable contract and before I get into some of the particulars and we're here to answer any questions, I do want to recognize and if I miss anybody, on the Brockton education side uh, with our bargaining team, I know present tonight I saw Chris Doherty. If you'll all stand, please. I saw Gail Manos, uh, Jennifer Guzikowski, and I believe Jim Doyle. Is that, is that everybody that's present? As I said, a lot of hard work. I want to thank you. I know we all stuck with it at times when it didn't seem like we would. Um, I, I think you've done an excellent job for your membership. Again, it is fair and equitable. And uh, again, to, to just talk about some, some of the high points. I do want to also mention Dr. Kathy Moran, who again with Kim, I won't even talk about the hours that I knew you put in with separate task forces, bringing people together to actually have dialogue about how we can make things better for kids and families and our teachers in the district. So did you figure out the hours, Kim? Because I can't begin to thank both you and Kathy enough for what you did. Um, I believe we had over 100 subcommittees that Kathy and I co-chaired, and I would say most of those meetings were three hours long. So um, I will say that my family is very glad that this is over, <laughs> and I can go back to them at night. Um, you know, so I just want to thank the school committee before you go on, the representatives who re represented you very well over the past year. It was very challenging at times, as you said. We had many difficult conversations, but. You know, I think that we all had an end goal and the contract had not been looked at for so long. It was, it was a very long process, but I would say um, well over 500 hours between all of us. Right. And, and just to acknowledge, on our bargaining team, uh, I had uh, Vice Chair Tom Minicello, Andy Robinson, and Judy Sullivan. So again, thank you for so many hours that were put in on this. <laughs> Uh, some of the uh, points of the contract. Uh, we have been looking at our calendar for a number of years and many of you know that with the type of winters that we're having, and we're not the only district looking at this, there were um, days in the calendars, a number of religious days that we were able to firm up in this calendar going forward. Um, I feel it helps with uh, more time on learning for our kids prior to testing. Um, 
not only that, I, I do believe, again, when you look at starting the school year, we would have been with Jewish holidays this year. We would have had three days out of the calendar in the month of September. Uh, that will not happen at this point. We did add an additional religious day. And what I want to say, as far as the religious days, we did not change the language in the contract. People will be able to observe their faith in, in a way that, that certainly is appropriate. Those are not things that we changed. I had the opportunity to actually meet with ten members of the clergy, not this past Friday, the Friday previous. We had a very healthy discussion. We're actually going to open up dialogue with the clergy and probably meet a couple of times during the school year. There were a number of questions and they were certainly things that we talked about during our negotiations. So tonight we will have an opportunity to finalize if you ratify our calendar. Understand there will be a supplemental calendar. We're looking to add some uh, professional days in there you know, for our teachers for some common planning time. Also, we're able to add additional minutes every day for our elementary teachers as they prepare for classes. For many years, it was 30 minutes. We're presently going to 40 minutes. It'll allow our students also additional time with some of their specialists in a specialist schedule. On the horizon, there's a new schedule for Brockton High School. I think this was a long time coming. We're looking to connect contact, uh, connected uh, content for kids, common planning time added for our teachers in working with their departments. Um, the new contract also allows us to put together a joint labor management task force to deal with many of our alternative pathways, our alternative programs. They don't necessarily fit into an elementary model, a middle school model, or a high school model as far as their schedule goes. So we will be able to work with our union if there is uh, a new alternative school that is developed and put forth a schedule that is fair to our teachers and makes sense for our alternative pathway. I'm very pleased moving forward as a district. Baseline Edge will be our efficient online tool for educator evaluation for all our administrators, all our teachers, our educators. We're also moving all staff members to a direct deposit system. Um, I, I know for some people we kind of chuckled over that a little, um, but again, it's, it's something that, that in many businesses you walk in and there, there is not a choice. Um, we will transition into this with the opening of the school year. I know you're working with Aldo Petronio mm -hmm. to make sure that is a smooth process. As I said, um, I talked about the religious holidays. Uh, I talked about you know, meeting with the clergy. Um, mentioned the supplemental calendar. There, there certainly are many other things. I think the document, the MOU, mm -hmm. was what, over 38 pages? Yes, it was. With, with additional language. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot remember a time, and, and certainly mm -hmm. I've been here 38 years, where this type of a document uh, was, was put together. So again, I want to open it up, and, and Kim, please mm -hmm. add, as I said, I, I could never sit here tonight and touch on all mm -hmm. of the things, but certainly we have uh, MOUs available if anyone mm -hmm. would like to take a look at them. Not to allow you to misrepresent yourself, but it's 34 pages. Um, Sorry. Okay. Um, I think that there's a lot of good things. I'm not going to reiterate everything you said, Madam Superintendent, because you did a fine job summarizing. But I think there are a lot of um, benefits for both sides, and there's a lot of benefits for our students in this uh, MOU. Um, I believe it is a fair contract. I think there's a lot of trust built into this contract. Um, we all, both sides, want the Brockton Public Schools to run orderly and to run in a way that makes sense. So there is built-in um, mechanisms for comment, review, and changes if necessary. If things don't make sense, then we, you know, relook at it and we, um, you know, make the changes that are going to make the trains run on time as they say. Um, so um, I can't say enough about both teams of people. Um, I respect all the people on both sides. Uh, it, was a, it was a very um, long and arduous experience, that's for sure. But it was done, um, I think, with dignity and it was done with mutual respect and I think and to a degree with <coughs> mutual trust. Um, so. Yeah, that's all I'll say. I, 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 it's, it's, a good, it's good for the city, it's good for our students, and it's good for our community, uh, our school community. So. I just wanted to say that um, I think it's a very good contract for the student and the teachers, and the changes that will take place are actually <coughs> historic, and it will benefit the students, the teachers, and the administrators in many ways. 
and I just wanted to thank the teachers for all their hard work, which is very much recognized. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, yeah, right? Um, no, I mean, I think, I, look, I, I second everything that was already shared. Um, you know, I'm, this is my fourth year on the school committee now, and I, I would say that this is probably one of the things that I'm most proud of, is, is this, this accomplishment. I mean, the time and the effort and the energy that went into this, but the, the way that we went about it, um, you know, um, it wasn't a... It wasn't a contentious quid pro quo give and take. I mean, it was really, it was a, our facilitator wasn't mentioned. I mean, we, we had, you know, Ron, um, um, you know, we, we just, we had an amazing facilitator who kind of helped us every step of the way through this process. Um, Ron Suga, who, who was a phenomenal guy. And, and I don't, I don't know that we could have done this without him, quite honestly. Um, but uh, um, certainly one of the things I'm most proud of um, in my four years on the school committee to date, so. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Ron, and Ron was a former teacher in the Brockton Public mm -hmm. Schools many years ago. We actually even dug up a picture, I think it was back in the 70s. We did. But it also <laughs> brings me also to mention to everybody, um, we also had two, obviously, two attorneys working with us, mm -hmm. uh, Colin Confoy, again, um, you know, certainly excellent representation mm -hmm. for the Brockton Education Association, as he always is, with, with a lot of effort. And on our end, on a sad note, um, we had Ed Lennox, who has been with the district well over 30 years. I, I think he's the only attorney I ever remember representing the school committee. And uh, we're, we're very pleased uh, about bringing this uh, certainly to an end result and a fair result. But Ed Lennox has uh, let us know that after many, many years, uh, he is retiring finally to enjoy his family. Um, he will be senior counsel, I believe, until the end of this calendar year. So we, we it, wish Ed well. We actually had invited him to come to the school committee meeting. He had other things, and I know at some point we will honor him uh, in a very appropriate way, but it is a huge loss for the district. Uh, he has just such a history. So I want to thank uh, both attorneys and, and certainly wish Ed Lennox uh, many years of happiness. Both attorneys are fine attorneys. Um, but Ed Lennox is, you know, God love him. He's going to retire, and he deserves to have a nice retirement but he is an attorney that every attorney really should strive to be like he is so knowledgeable so professional so um, even keeled um, feisty when he needs to be feisty um, but smart strategizes um, keeps people on track um, makes the right suggestions at the right times has impeccable judgment. Um, he, he's someone that I certainly, as, a, as an attorney, look up to and um, you know, hope to emulate. Um, I'm going to miss him, and I told him, uh, I'm disappointed in you, Ed, <laughs> leaving us, but um, um, he deserves a nice retirement, and um, he's definitely going to be a loss to this district. Um, luckily, we have some fine attorneys that he's tutored, so to speak, mm -hmm. and mentored. But um, I can't say enough about Ed Lennox, you know, excellent. Yeah. As I said, at some point when it's appropriate, we will certainly do something very special for him. Yeah, I certainly had a chance to work with Ed during my four years on the school committee and would echo everyone's sentiments that he's uh, been an outstanding attorney and, and uh, provided great representation to the school committee for many, many years. Good. And so I can just add quickly, I'd just like to add my personal thanks to the collective bargaining <coughs> units on both sides. Um, when I was on the school committee, I was involved in collective bargaining. I'm certainly very close to it now as mayor. I don't sit in the room anymore, but I'm very intimately involved. It's really hard work if you haven't done it before. It's really hard work. And you sometimes take it home with you. Um, you strain friendships with people on the other side sometimes when you can't agree on something. Uh, and it's, I think it's some of the hard work that's done by both the union and the school committee that the public just doesn't see and doesn't realize the extent and the, the length of the work that's, uh, that's done. So I would like to thank the people that served uh, both for the school committee and for the BEA bargaining unit. I just thank them for their service and being able to get this to a conclusion. And I think that uh, in what I learned in my years in real estate is in, in any fair deal, 
neither side is completely happy. And so when we get a settlement, then when both sides say, well, I like that, but I wish we got this, now, that means we got a good fair deal, that there's a little give and take on both sides, and each side has a chance to work on the issues that are really important to them. So uh, I just want to personally thank everyone for helping to get this done. And one final note. Yeah. I'd also like to thank everyone's family because <laughs> we, we put in so many hours and there were so many nights that we all had to say to our family, just like Kim said, you know, we've got another meeting tonight, we've got another bargaining session tonight. And they look at us like we were out of our minds, crazy. Um, but, I mean, they put up with so much, they sacrifice so much, they tolerate so much. Um, I would definitely like to thank all everyone's family who basically put up with us and, and are certainly glad that this chapter is behind us. Hopefully. Manos is elephant, so I want to thank yes. the elephant on the table <laughs> that we made sure we used a number of times. So the elephant was there throughout the bargaining session and uh, I think was our good luck charm. So I just want to add one thing, um, not to prolong this, but I think we also have to acknowledge the subcommittees that were put together because besides the teams, when we had a topic where we needed expertise, um, we put together subcommittees for the high school schedule, for the elementary schedule, for the alternative schools, for educator evaluation, for job descriptions. I mean, we had a number of members who were involved in the process this time, and I think that was something that was very helpful because none of us pretended to be the experts in the room, and we would never... Um, you know, want to make those decisions so we didn't work in a vacuum, which is very different than traditional bargaining. We went to those people and we said what will work and what won't. So we definitely included those voices. So that's a very different piece of this bargaining. So I think it's important to acknowledge all of them and there are many people, so I don't have their names, but I think all of us know who they were. So, you know, just one little piece. Thank you. And you know, I hope going forward the other thing that we have learned as a district is with interest-based bargaining, it might be something we're able to share with other bargaining units. Uh, I think we saw a lot of pluses and, as Kim said, a lot of opportunity for people that have the knowledge and are willing to look at interests and, you know, share those interests and come to a, uh, a resolution. I do think it's something that we should look at, you know, with our other bargaining units. So I make a motion to ratify the memorandum <coughs> of agreement between the Brockton School Committee and the Brockton Education Association. Second. Okay, motion has been made properly seconded. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous approval. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> The members of the school community would make sure that they sign it. Yeah. Yep. So make sure all the members of the school committee sign the contracts before we leave. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Superintendent. Um, items to refer to subcommittee. Um, we we do have a number, and I know we talked about it at our finance subcommittee under other business. We have policy to set, and I believe we have the superintendent's evaluation and contract subcommittee. July. Correct. So, yep. so those will be our meetings in the summer. Um, and Does that, do any other members of the school committee have any items that they would like to refer to subcommittee? No? Okay. okay. Okay to move on to the next topic. Yep. Next item on the agenda is unfinished business. This is a continuation of an item uh, that's been discussed at a previous uh, meeting and uh, this will involve uh, the school committee taking a vote to approve the 2015-2016 school calendar. Uh, the vote on this was uh, held off pending the successful resolution of the collective bargaining agreement. So uh, because there were issues addressed in bargaining that uh, tied to the calendar. So at this point, uh, the school committee members have all been provided with copies of the school calendar. Uh, if there's any discussion, we'll entertain it. Otherwise, we'll go on to a motion. Okay, motion on the table to approve, uh, to adopt the uh, school calendar for the next, uh, for the 2016-15-16 school year. Second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous approval. 
The teachers would report on September 1st. Students' first day of school will be September 2nd, 2015. If we do not have any snow days next year, we would be out on June 15th with a backup of with the five additional snow days, June 22nd, and the graduation at Brockton High School will take place on June 4th. So that is a calendar for next year. Good. I, I would love to have no snow days next year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda, new business. Uh, anyone have anything to that would like to be recognized under new business? Let's we'll start with Mr. Henningsen. Start um, I just wanted to let the public know that um, on Thursday, June 11th, I was at the State House uh, supporting our teachers in conjunction with the MTA, AFT, BEA, et cetera, um, on, and testifying on behalf of, of uh, high stakes testing and some pending legislation that was um, presented on the State House level. Um, I was submitted by testimony on technology and urban school district needs, basically suggesting that if we're going to go with a test that the state needs to provide us with the funding for that, um, for those uh, pieces of equipment. Um, I was honored and privileged to attend this and I was let our legislature know um, essentially that high stakes testing very much needs to be reconsidered and I was in favor on most of those bills that were presented. Okay, thank you. Thanks, and thanks for your service. Mr. Minicello. Um, first of all, I was able to attend today over here at BHS um, the Entrepreneurial Club uh, who invited uh, through Cedric, Mr. Cedric Turner, um, their advisor and uh, teacher, um, uh, at the presentation by Jamie Bush. Um, he, was, he was excellent. The kids loved him. Um, he basically told about his history which is a very checkered past. You know, you would think that, oh, this is a guy that, you know, had no hiccups in life and went through um, everything smooth and had everything handed to him. And um, he didn't. He told them about, you know, his trials and tribulations uh, um, along the way. He told them about, um, um, you know, focusing on a goal. He spoke to them about networking. Um, he spoke to them and invited them um, he's going to arrange a visit for them in Boston at some companies that are doing some really innovative work. He spoke to them about coding. Um, he, was really, he was really good and, he, and his demeanor was great with the kids. Um, um, and he told them about all of his involvement with different organizations. The, this guy really has done a lot for inner city um, youth and setting up programs for them, um, you know, sailing programs, skiing programs. Um, all sorts of good stuff for, for kids that ordinarily wouldn't um, have these types of opportunities. Um, and um, he's known Cedric Turner for, I, I think it's like over 20 years. I mean, they, I mean, and Cedric is so committed to these types of things. I mean, so these two are, are buddies. I mean, so th this, this guy lives and breathes it, you know. Um, uh, he's, a, he's an insurance, he's an insurance guy, um, um, long-term care and life and uh, key man policies, um, commercial stuff. Um, but he, I think he really um, resonated with the kids um, because, again, he told them about how, you know, different hurdles he had and what he did and didn't lose focus and, and told them about, you know, some um, places where he went to school where um, he made mistakes, got caught doing all sorts of stupid things, got thrown out. Um, but there were people there, you know, at a couple places that didn't give up on him. And, um, you know, his, um, uh, his report cards weren't all that great, you know, and he still moved on and managed to, um, you know, get his degree and um, be successful. I mean, so it was really, um, it was really uh, motivational, you know, and uh, they could really relate to him because he wasn't arrogant. He was, you know, just very humble and just had a nice, calm demeanor. Um, kids asked great questions. Um, uh, Principal Wolder was there. And I think she would agree. The kids were so well behaved. Nice group of kids presented themselves, you know, very professionally, very well dressed. Um, bright kids, you could tell, just good kids. These are just the best, the best of Brockton, you know, were in that room. And it just made me proud to listen to, you know, how they handled themselves, how mature they were, what they were asking him. Um, you know, all very relevant life lesson type of um, uh, questions and, and dialogue. It, it was great. Um, so 
my, my hat's off to Cedric Turner. Um, I'd also like to thank John Jerome. John Jerome um, you know, was, was in attendance. Uh, John you know, is, was our firmer, former superintendent and deputy and worked here forever and he has not forgotten Brockton. He's still involved and um, he, he and Cedric I think have a relationship and uh, um, Cedric won't let him go and, <laughs> and he's, uh, he's working with these kids and, and doing good things. So John's um, a part of that too. Um, so that was great and the, I'll be quick on the second one. Um, the other thing that Brockton is finally into is lacrosse. And um, Mr. Murray, Mr. Connolly over at um, West. Um, Mr. Mr. Murray, who are the other, who's the other gentleman that's involved with Mr. Connolly? There, there was another coach. Yeah, and, and uh, Mr. Thomas helps out as well. Um, I attended the boys lacrosse tournament um, over at Franklin Park Field. Um, and I'm telling you, our kids love it. And there were there are over there's close to 35 kids participating, and they all they want to do is get in the game. And it's it's not like, I mean, I'm a baseball guy, but it's not like baseball where you got nine starters playing and you got the rest of them bench warmers. These kids are all being rotated in different lines because they have to be fresh, they have to be fast. You got to get them in, get them out, and it, it is awesome. And the mix of kids that are involved in this program is phenomenal. These are all good, solid kids. Um, they've played five games this year. Guess how many games they've lost? None. None. I mean, that's awesome. Kids that just started lacrosse and they've lost zero games this year. That, I mean, it's really taking hold. Um, so I, I can't say enough. And I love it that the girls are involved in it too. Um, it's it's it's. It's an exciting sport to watch. I mean, it's like street hockey, you know, street hockey, hockey, and football all rolled up in one, and a little rugby involved too when the ref's not looking. But um, um, it's, it's, it's good. It's good for the city. You know, we're getting into another area, and it just seems to be catching on. Um, and it's nice to see so many people involved, and a lot of parents from Brockton attended. Um, and again, our kids were extremely well behaved. And um, the other teams were great too. You could tell the demeanor of the kids. They weren't mean, nasty kids. They were kids that just are competitive, um, and we're all enjoying this this program. Even you know, even the Boston teams. We played Boston teams, and they all got along. That you could tell once in a while. You know, when the game started, they you know smack each other a little, just say say, hey, how you doing? It wasn't like you know regressive. It was just like, hey, what's happening? You know. It was good. It was real good. Sorry, Andy. But uh, it, you can tell. You can tell it's a, it's a nice environment. It's good. It, yeah. So, yeah. So, that's... Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. 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 So, all right. I'm done. If I could real quick, too. Monday, uh, the Barrett Russell School, uh, the kindergarten center there, is going to be, I guess, opening their garden. I know they've been using them, but with the help of Mike Thomas, uh, I think uh, Youth Build, right, was a part of it as well. Um, you know, given that just a couple of years ago, that was essentially a vacant, empty building in the middle of, of, a, of, a, of a neighborhood. Um, now they've added a, a beautiful um, set of raised bed gardens out back, um, enough so that every classroom in the school can have their own raised bed garden. Um, the students this year are going to get to enjoy it, and certainly kindergartners Every year for the indefinite future, we'll get to join it. There's a beautiful mural out there. Um, and so um, I'm just really happy for them. It's a Ward 2 school, and, and I've done as much as I can to certainly support them as they've kind of evolved and grown. And, and uh, um, just really excited for the opportunity that this will present for our youngest learners for, for a really long time. Anyone else with new business? Judy. I just want to let the public know, especially the parents, if wondering what the kids are going to do this summer, the Community Schools Summer School Program brochures are available in all guidance offices. I know the website was being worked on. Is it up and running now? Okay. So the, and also the Community Schools website for registrations for the summer. Great. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple quick things, and I'll try to be fast because Tom and Andy used up all the time. Uh, Jessica mentioned the, uh, the Drama Club production of Anything Goes. I, I just want to let everyone know that uh, I had the pleasure to be involved uh, uh, with the Rotary Club last Thursday when they gave their annual community service awards. 
and Mr. Hogan uh, was recognized by the Brockton Rotary Club for uh, hit the great work that he does here at the high school. Uh, so I want to be sure to mention that. Yesterday we had our Flag Day ceremonies at Brockton City Hall. We had to move inside due to the inclement weather, uh, but we do have an indoor flagpole for just such occasions. But I want to mention here, because we had students from both Plouffe Academy and the Arnon School uh, as part of the uh, ceremonies, the chorus from Plouffe Academy performed a couple of patriotic songs. And then at the end of the ceremony, uh, while we raised the flag, the Arnon students sang, it's a grand old flag. So the students were a very big part of our uh, Flag Day uh, recognition and ceremony uh, yesterday. And well, I had one more thing, but I don't remember what it was now, so it could have been too important. Superintendent? There, yeah, no, of course you will. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, earlier this evening, we had a um, public hearing on the budget, and no one uh, chose to speak. So it was opened and closed in accordance with Massachusetts general law. Um, however, uh, as a housekeeping item, I believe uh, we should make a motion to adopt the budget that we have set forth to the city council. Um, so may I make a motion? Sure. All right. So uh, motion to adopt a school committee recommended budget of $165,072,500 for net school spending and $7,582,528 for non-net school spending providing the City Council makes no further cuts to the Mayor's requested FY16 school committee appropriation. Um, so that is my motion. Yep, motion has been made. Properly seconded. All in favor? Approved unanimously. Now just to let the public know that even though those are the numbers adopted, it doesn't mean that we've finally decided how that money is getting spent, but that's the money that we're working with. Right. And, and there's also the uh, Brockton City Council will have final consideration of the overall city budget this coming Monday night, the 22nd. Thought of my other item, real quick. Just want to remind everyone that I first I want to thank the school committee for their support in awarding the uh, Chartwell's uh, charitable grant money to the Summer Parks and Playground program. Thank you very much. Uh, we will be offering a seven-week program beginning on July 6th, children ages 7 to 12. We have five city playgrounds uh, set up from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and it's free. There will be high school and college students working for us in summer jobs as counselors. Uh, we have one of our teachers as the overall director of the program. Uh, we did it for the first time in a long time last year. The first week, I think we had about 65 kids showing up. Uh, by the last week, we had about 300 kids showing up every day. So there are five different parks. It's free. You just register your child. Uh, we serve a free healthy lunch every day to everyone that's there at the playground or park. And this year, we're even able to enhance that, and we're now serving breakfast and lunch uh, as part of it. So beyond the activities, physical fitness, safe haven, mentorship by the older students. We're also, you know, these are the kids that we have the other 10 months of the year and this is making sure that we're taking care of them in the summertime too. So it'll be for seven weeks starting on Monday, July 6th at each of the playgrounds, two out of the four days each week. They get a bus and go come over and swim in the Manning pool. Um, and so we've got some really good activities and we bring some things in. So. Uh, for anyone that may be watching the meeting, if you've got children between the ages of 7 and 12, please register them for the program. It's free of charge. And uh, the playgrounds are uh, placed geographically around the city. O'Donnell Playground, North Junior High, the Gilmore School, the James Edgar Playground, and the one change this year is Hancock is the fifth one. We moved Ash Street to Hancock. But five different city playgrounds strategically around the city and it's free to all Brockton residents age 7 through 12. Just need to be signed up by a parent or guardian. So thank you. Um, now we approved that in the finance subcommittee minutes of June 9th in this consent agenda. Mr. Petronio, do we need to make a specific motion to approve, to ratify that vote that was taken in finance with respect to the money or is that fine? Okay. Yeah. Just don't so it, was part of the, it was part of the finance committee minutes that are part of the consent agenda tonight. 
uh, those are public records available to anyone that would like one. Great. Okay. Anything else? A motion to adjourn. How about a motion Second. to adjourn has been made, properly seconded. All in favor? This meeting's adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>